And then that does not look right. Much nicer than what was there before. I did the old calibrated eyeball measurements. Welcome back to the Lost Cause Ranch. Those of you following along might notice this looks different than it did before. That is right, today is LS3 Defender Day and we're getting rid of some rusty stuff. We are gonna tackle getting that AC condenser mounted today. But before we get too deep in, we need to grab some parts from the Defender container and we need to move some snow out of the way. Imagine that, the old uh, three-wheeler has an oil leak. It's super nice to have our Defender parts container now located indoors. Much easier to sort through. Another bonus is it also has sleeping arrangements on top now. In case Sasha kicks me out of the house. we found some of our good old rusty pieces. We left off in the last video doing the cooling system and we're gonna hop back on to that at the end of this video. But before that, we're gonna give this area some attention. I wanna get the fuel tank mounted up and we're gonna work on getting that sill and the rear tub stuff sorted. And we're kinda hopping back and forth for a couple reasons. I wanna get the fuel tank mounted up off the ground and on the cooling stuff, we need to bend some things with the sheet metal brake and we'll also need to do that for these guys. And that sheet metal break is over at Ted's, so I'm gonna try and have everything ready to go and do it in one trip. Every once in a while, I try and be efficient. Don't get used to it though. All right, the rear of the tank mounts to the chassis here, and the front has a bracket coming off this trailing arm mount. We are going to remake that, but we are going to do a little bit sturdier one because we're gonna have provisions for a fuel tank skid plate. We'll measure out for the plate here. We got four by four, by triangle. So try to get a little more organized with the hardware and this is our current solution. These guys will hopefully make life a little bit easier. So the fuel tank's sitting about where it needs to be. Now I wanna get the sill channel in. Two things need to happen before that. We're gonna remake that guy in a little less rusty fashion. And then that does not look right. So we'll chop that out, get a new piece in there. Ironically, this side needs it as well. Unbelievable. So we're probably just gonna go into clean metal, which is right about, we'll make it five inches. Two inches, so five by two. And the bottom hole is an inch and an eighth off. So we're gonna remake these guys just off a few measurements. This guy's inch and seven eighths wide on the inside, inch and three quarter on the top there. So knock those guys out real quick. This is pre-bend, obviously. I think that should work nicely. We trace the slots there. We'll weld a nut on the back side of this once it's all bent to match that. And we want to touch thicker on these. Haven't decided yet, these will either get powder coated or we may send them off to get galvanized as well. Beefy. Got that new plate fit up there. We'll weld this guy on. 
smooth it all out. And once again, you will never know. We are slowly getting rid of all the bad spots from that donor defender. That was quite rusty. This one will be quite not rusty. That's the plan at least. And all this fancy new aluminum is gonna get us there. Might have to address this area too. Hmm. Now we got this side all fitted up and clamped into place. I think we'll buzz her in. So we got both sides welded in. We'll come in, clean them up, and then we also need to punch the upper hole. So we're gonna take this little burr, which has a nice rounded end, and radius that edge there. That should work out nicely. Still got a hole there. These two turned out pretty swell, if you ask me. Much nicer than what was there before. For those guys, we need to have the tub bolted into place so I can make sure those holes are located. There's a lot of steps in this process and getting the sills to where we can mount those guys is one of those steps before we can locate this. That along with bolting in the rear cross member here is going to ensure that we can repair these correctly and have everything in the right place so the tub is in the right place. Happy with that though. So we're kind of hopping around a bit as usual and we're making our brackets to mount the AC condenser to the radiator because we're gonna have to bend these as well. Now it's time to run and get all this bent into shape. And Mother Nature has no idea what she is doing right now. Just a couple days ago, we were plowing snow with the Bob Kitty and it was like negative 15 and right now it's 40 degrees out. We'll go ahead and bend the easy ones first. Quick and easy. Now this one's gonna be a touch more challenging and needs to be a little more precise. So we'll get this dialed in here. You OG people may remember that one. Let me know if you guys want to see an update on Ted's original 2A. And if you want a keychain that resembles that guy, lostcauseranch.com link is down below. We have a few different varieties of these now. Look at how much nicer that is without quite so many Land Rovers laying in the yard. So those guys are all finished up. Got our nut welded on there to mimic where the factory one is. The radius on the bend is a touch different because these guys are thicker than the original ones. And that is what our little box and pan break could make happen. But I think those look nice and will do the trick well. That worked out pretty well. Now to get out of here. Those little brackets worked out nicely. Both sides fit well. And we're starting to get the rear tub somewhat located. And my main purpose of doing this is I wanna lock this guy down and I'm gonna build some bracing across top because we're gonna tackle that in the near future and get rid of this bulkhead for a touch more leg room. Not for me because I'm short, but we do want to accommodate some taller people. Knocked out this little guy to start the bracket for the front of the fuel tank mount. That's just some square tube with a cap on top. 
bolt will go through there. So off this mount, we're gonna go straight across with a plate to that one, and we're gonna leave provisions to mount a skid plate for this guy so we can protect him from any rocks and whatnot. And once we get everything else mounted up here and we can see what we're dealing with sill-wise and everything, we'll tie that into another point to keep it nice and sturdy. But for now, just to there. So that way the tank is mounted. Then we can test fit the seat box to make sure our new fuel pump and everything clears because that would be good if it did. I did the old calibrated eyeball measurements when I cut that and placed that. So we shall see because that was done when there was only like a eighth of a Defender put together. <laughs> That little square tube on the fuel tank will go right over this hole, and that hole is provision to stick the socket through so we can actually bolt this guy on. So there is the start of our front fuel tank bracket. Eventually we'll do some holes and some threaded inserts to hold the skid plate and some additional bracing to other parts of the chassis. But for now this will hold the tank in place nicely. That'll work out great. We'll box this guy in later on and we'll be able to have an aluminum skid plate mount to that. Sturdy sturdy. Now back to the cooling package. So we get to use these little brackets we made up now. We'll go something like that. Condenser will sit like that. So there is our condenser and we'll square everything up and buzz that guy together. So we gave ourselves plenty of clearance so our AC fittings don't run into this guy. And uh, the idea behind this is everything's gonna mount to the radiator and then the cooling pack can go in and out in one shot with the additional ability to pull the condenser and the other two coolers off separately if need be. That is slick. Super happy with how that landed. And we're nicely tucked back with plenty of room for the other two coolers while leaving a mile of room in here for the fans and everything in front of the engine. But just wanted to come in here and say thanks to a couple people that reached out about some other options for our front drive. We had a couple people recommend LS brackets and I believe that is the route we're gonna go. I do like the simplicity of them and they got quite a few different options so we're gonna measure some things out. This is the one I think we'll use, but we need to measure first because we have a steering gear that is gonna go here because it's not over there anymore because it's left-hand drive. So we need to make sure things don't try and occupy the same space because that is not possible. Hopefully soon we'll have those brackets to get that sorted out. And by the hair of my chinny chin chin, that fuel pump fits nicely under the seat box so we can start running our fuel line as well. That'll go from there, 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 and into the engine bay and feed that guy. With those sills in there, seat box in there, the Defender is starting to look more and more complete. Maybe we'll get some doors on it. We're gonna call that a good stopping point for the night. Fuel tank in, both sills in, less rusty bits in, which is always a good thing. This bulkhead is gonna disappear very, very soon. But as always, appreciate you guys watching, appreciate you subscribing, and stay tuned. We're rolling on the Defender now, and this thing's gonna start coming along very quickly. I'm just happy as I'll get out with the radiator set up. With that being said, we'll catch you guys on the next one.